Hi all, this is a full guide for the Black Rock Depths Pet Battle Dungeon. Please note you will have needed to complete the four other pet dungeons to unlock the quest for this one. Start by picking up the quest Shadowy Showdown from Tizzy Gear Jolt if your alliance located east of the Proudmoor Barracks in Boralus. If you're Horde, talk to Radek Fuselock located here in Desar Alor. To get to Blackrock Depths, head to the Searing Gorge or the Burning Steps. And over to Blackrock Mountain. Enter the mountain and head into the lava pit in the centre. Go to the platform where you would enter Mountain Core. Here go through the passage on the right and then follow this down to the entrance to Black Rock Depths Dungeon. On the left will be your hand in NPC, Bert Macklin. Talk to him to receive the quest Shadows of Blackrock. Completing the dungeon on normal mode gives the usual mana poof portal and an ultimate battle training stone. Having completed the dungeon on normal mode, you then unlock the weekly token giving challenge mode version of the dungeon where you're unable to heal your pets whilst running it. Completing it on challenge mode will award one shadowy gem per week. These can be used to purchase the following. One gem gets you an unopened black rock supply crate. Two gems gets you tiny claw. One gem also gets you the wheeling lasher. And finally three gems gets you experiment 13. Now for the challenge mode of the dungeon. Check in the description for the timestamps and rematch strings. Talk to Bert Macklin to enter the dungeon. Once inside head forward into the arena. All of the fights take place in this arena. This activates stage 2 where you fight against Haru Cloudwatcher. For this I used a macabre marionette with macabre maraca, death and decay and dead man's party. Your second pet is a mechanical scorpion with a speed above 284 with wind up, blinding poison and black claw and finally any backup pet preferably with a speed above 280 with a bonus damage to be stability such as missile. Not much of a fighter, but I am the best pet trainer on Azeroth. Start with Denmont's party. Came up with Black Claw and hunting party. <laughs> that was me. Once the party is finished, cast Macabre Maraca until Bomber is defeated. We'll usually take two. Once Bomber is defeated, Beater enters, cast Death and Decay, then use Deadman's Party until your Marionette is defeated. Once defeated, bring in your Scorbid. Cast Wind Up to Charge and then Wind Up to Hit. This should finish up Beta and Alpha enters. Cast Wind Up to Charge followed by Blinding Poison. Then Black Claw Now just spam wind up until Alpha is also defeated. If needed, use your backup pet to clean up.
Once Haru is defeated, we enter stage 3 where we fight against one of three pets, either Liz, Ralph or Rampage. For Liz and Ralph, I used an Iron Starlet with Wind Up, Toxic Smoke and Supercharge. And then any two pets with bonus damage to beast abilities. I used a blue Clockwork Rocket Bot with Missile and Toxic Smoke and a Blight Breath with Slime and Toxic Smoke. Start with Wind Up the Charge. Then Supercharge. And then wind up to hit. This will do a nice amount of damage. Now simply use Toxic Smoke until if and when your Starlet is defeated. If needed, use your bag of pets to clean up. For Rampage, I went with a Critter Pet with a speed above 317 with Stampede. Your second pet is a Mechanical Axe Beak with Alpha Strike, Hair Wire and Decoy and then any pet just as backup with a bonus damage to Beast Ability. Start with your Critter Pet and just spam Stampede until defeated. I used a Critter Pet here so we won't be stunned by Bash due to the Critter Ratio. You could take advantage of dodge and scratch or any other abilities your critter may have to maximise damage. Once your critter pet is defeated, bring in your axe beak and cast hair wire. This combined with a Shattered Defense's debuff from Stampede will do a nice amount of damage. If this doesn't defeat Rampage, use Decoy if Rampage just bashes off cooldown and Alpha Strike to fill until the fight is won. If you are unlucky with some bad RNG, use your bag of pets to finish up. Once you've defeated the caged creature, we enter stage 4 which will be against Thurin Skysong. Your first pet is a Ravenous Pridling with Sieve, Disruption and Life Exchange. Your second pet is a Coastal Sandpiper. This one should be a Speed Speed version with Peck, Flock and Quicksand. And finally a Phoenix Hatchling with Burn, Immolate and Conflagrate. Start with your Pridling and cast Disruption. This removes the unstable engineering buff and thus cuts down much of the RNG of this fight. Follow this with one Sieve, then Life Exchange, and now cast Sieve until your Pridling is defeated. RNG will determine how much health logic has when your Pridling is defeated, so I passed a few rounds here to show what to do should your Pridling be defeated early. If this was the case, bring in your Sandpiper, cast Peck until logic enters its mechanical round, once in the mechanical round, cast Quicksand and then Peck until logic is defeated. Once Logic is defeated, Math enters, cast Flock, Math's Whirling Gears will swap you out to your Phoenix Hatchling on the second round. When your Hatchling is swapped in, cast Immolate, followed by Conflagrate. Do the Shatter Defense's debuff from Flock, this will do a large amount of damage and finish off Math.
Once you've defeated Thurin, we enter stage 5, where you fight against two pets, each of the two is from a set of three. So one will be either Char, Tempton or Wilbur, and the other will be one of Ninja, Shred or Splint. We'll start with Shred. Your first pet is an infected squirrel, with Stampede, Creeping Fungus and Corpse Explosion. Your second pet is a Fell Flame or similar pet, with Burn, Immolate and Conflagrate. And finally, any pet is back up, it's unlikely to be used. Start with Creeping Fungus. Followed by Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, if your Squirrel was in its Undead Round, cast Stampede again. If not in your Undead Round, cast Creeping Fungus followed by Stampede. I just cast Stampede here to avoid doing extra damage in case your Squirrel entered its Undead Round early. Once your Squirrel is defeated, bring in your Fell Flame or similar pet Cast Immolate Followed by Conflagrate and Burn if needed to finish up the fight For Ninja, your first pet is a Long-Eared Owl with Savage Talon, Call Darkness and Nocturnal Strike your second pet is a Turraclaw Hatchling with Alpha Strike, Dodge and Hawkeye. Your final pet can be anything, it's unlikely to be used. Start with Call Darkness. Followed by Nocturnal Strike. Now simply use Nocturnal Strike and Cooldown and Savage Talent to fill until your Owl is defeated. Once your Owl is defeated, bring in your Turraclaw. Use Dodge when Whirlpool has one round remaining, otherwise spam Alpha Strike until the fight is done. For Splint, your first pet is a Sister of Temptation, with Shadow Shock, Curse of Doom and Love Stroke. Your second pet is any flying pet with Flock. Your final pet is anything, it won't be used. Past the first round, Splint will use Burrow and be unattackable. Now cast Curse of Doom. Followed by Love Struck. Now swap to your Flock Pet. And cast Flock. Once Flock is finished, swap back to your sister. Splint will use Burrow and hit your sister when she enters. Now simply cast Shadow Shock until the fight is done. For Char, your first pet is any rabbit with a speed above 324 with Scratch, Dodge and Stampede. Your second pet is a Bile Larva or similar pet with Chomp or a similar hard hitting ability against undead. Your final pet won't be used. Start with dodge. 
followed by Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, cast one scratch, then Stampede until your rabbit is defeated. You could try to maximise damage by casting Dodge followed by Stampede, but I just went with Stampede. Once your rabbit is defeated, bring in your Bi Lava or similar pet. Due to being faster, your rabbit will have left two rounds of shattered defences on Char when it was defeated. So with your lava, just spam Chomp until the fight is done. For Tempton, your first pet is a Fawn or any pet with Stampede and Headbutt. Your second pet is any pet with Rampage. Your third pet is unlikely to be used. Start with Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, cast Headbutt. And then, if you can, another Stampede. Once your Thorn is defeated, bring in your Rampage pet and cast Rampage. This will finish up the fight. For Wilbur, all you'll likely need here is Iggy, with Savage Talon, Black Claw and Flog. But just in case of some bad RNG, bring any pet with some bonus damage to beast abilities as your backup pet. Start with Black Claw. Followed by Flock. Then Savage Talon. If needed, use your backup pets to clean up. Having defeated the two caged creatures, we enter stage 6, where we fight against Alran Heartshade. Now this one can be quite RNG at times, so I've included two strategies for this one, in case one fails like it did for me on this run. They're pretty much identical, but use slightly different pets. Credit goes to Schenk over at Zufus for coming up with this. I altered it slightly, but can't take credit for it. For the first strategy, you'll need a Fire Beetle. Higher the health here the better, as this will cut down the RNG somewhat. With Burn, Quarter Eyes and Apocalypse. Your second pet is a Tricorn with Scratch, Poison Fang and Sniff Out. And finally, an Ankle Render with Hunting Party, Leap and Black Claw. Start with Apocalypse. Then swap out to your Tricorn. Cast Sniff out to remove the Magma Trap. Sometimes this will have hit your Beetle and removed itself like here. Thrill will use Fade and swap out to Ruddy. With Ruddy in the battle, cast Poison Fang. Ruddy will use Clover, but as our pet is a critter, we won't get stunned. After Clover has been used, swap out to your Ankle Render. Cast Black Claw. Followed by Hunting Party. And if needed, leap until Ruddy is defeated. Once Ruddy is defeated, Thrill re enters. 
bum leap until your Uncle Render is defeated. Once your Uncle Render is defeated, bring in your Tricorn. If a Magma Trap is active, cast Sniff out, otherwise cast Poison Fang until Frill uses Fade and swaps out to Wanderer. With Wanderer in the battle, just pass until your Tricorn is defeated. Once defeated, your beetle re-enters, start with quarter eyes, and then pass until Apocalypse hits and defeats Wanderer. Once Wanderer is defeated, Frill re-enters. Here you use quarter eyes and cooldown and burn to fill until the fight is won. Or in this case, lost. If it all goes bad like it did here, try this second strategy. Your first pet will be a Lava Beetle with Burn, Court Rise and Apocalypse. Again a Health Breed to cut down RNG. Your second pet is a Rusty Root Snooter with Gnaw, Buried Treasure and Sniff Out. And finally a Zandalari Knee Biter, a Power Power version is recommended with Hunting Party, Black Claw and Blood Fang. Start with Apocalypse. Then swat out your snooter. Cast Sniff out to remove the Magma Trap. This will stun your snooter if active and removed. Thrill will use Fade and swap out the Ruddy. With Ruddy in the battle, cast No if you can, but you'll likely be stunned. If that was the case, just pass. Ruddy will use Clobber. After Clobber has been used, swat out your Knee Biter. Cast Black Claw. Followed by Hunting Party. And then Blood Fang. This will give you a small heal and finish off Ruddy. Once Ruddy is defeated, Frill re -enters. Swap out your Snooter. Cast Sniff out to remove the Magma Trap and stun yourself. Pass the stun round. Frill will have used Fade and swapped out to Wanderer. Cast Buried Treasure. And then pass until your Snooter is defeated. Once your Snooter is defeated, Bring in your beetle, cast quarter eyes and then pass until Apocalypse hits and defeats Wanderer. Once Wanderer is defeated, Frill re-enters. Here you have two choices, continue with your beetle using quarter eyes and cooldown and burn to fill, or you can swap to your knee biter and cast Black Claw followed by Hunting Party. Please note, Magma Trap can activate at any time and stun and usually defeat your Knee Biter, but if it doesn't, it will be a quick finish. Once you've defeated Alran, we enter stage 7 and come against Zuna Skull Crush. Your first pet is Gar's Ruby with Bite, Swallow You Whole and Geyser. Your second pet is an elusive skimmer, more healthier the better to cut down on the RNG, with Water Jet, Stampede and Whirlpool. And finally an Alpine Chipmunk or similar pet, again more healthier the better, with Scratch, Crouch and Stampede. Start with Geyser, and then swap to your skimmer here cast whirlpool
followed by Stampede. You'll hit Crush Face with the first round of Stampede, then Geyser will hit, do a nice amount of damage and stun Crush Face, who will then swap out for Fosling. Fosling will be hit by the remaining two rounds of Stampede, the first of which will be when Whirlpool hits, which will also do a nice amount of damage. Once Stampede is finished, cast Water Jet until Fosling is defeated. Will usually take two. Once Fosling is defeated, Crush Face re enters. Cast Stampede until your Skimmer is defeated. Once defeated, bring back in Garzarugi and cast Swallow You Whole until Crush Face is also defeated. We'll usually take two. Once Crush Face is defeated, Tremors enters. Cast Geyser. And then bite until defeated. This will usually be just the one. Occasionally, your Gar's Rooty can be defeated before getting to cast Bite. Either way, once Gar's Rooty is defeated, your Chipmunk enters. If Gar's Rooty hit with a Bite, cast Stampede. If Gar's Rooty was defeated before casting Bite, start with Crouch, followed by Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, cast Scratch until the fight is won. Should take two. Once Zuna is defeated, we enter stage eight and battle against Tasha Riley. For this, I use an elusive skimmer, more healthier the better, with Scratch, Stampede and Whirlpool. Your second pet is Little Bling, with Inflation, Extra Plating, and Make It Rain. And finally, a Dartmoor Tongue, or similar pet, with Shock and Awe, and Iron Cannon. Start with Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, cast Scratch until Presto enters its undead round. When in the undead round, cast Whirlpool. This will still be active once Presto's undead round is finished. Once Presto is defeated, Fury enters. Cast Stampede until defeated, which will usually just be the first round. Once defeated, bring in Lil Blaine. Start with extra plating. Followed by Make It Rain. and then Inflation. Once Inflation has finished, just repeat as before. So that was Extra Plating, followed by Make It Rain, and then inflation again. Repeat until Fury is defeated. Once Fury is defeated, Glitzy enters. Cast inflation with Little Bling until it is defeated. Yeah. 
Once Little Bling is defeated, your Dark Moon Tongue or similar pet enters. Just cast Shot and Awe, followed by Iron Cannon. This should finish up the fight. Once Tasha is defeated, we enter the final stage and battle against Pixie Whizzle. This is by far the easiest fight. All you'll need for this is a crazy carrot with iron bark and blistering cold. Your remaining two pets are your highest health elemental pets. Start with Iron Bark, followed by Blistering Cold. Now simply use Blistering Cold on cooldown and Iron Bark to fill until the fight is done. Your carrot will be constantly healed from all the ticks from Blistering Cold when the Giga Charged Mayhem Maker uses Double Zap and applies the debuff to itself that will heal you when it takes damage. This takes some time so I'll speed it up. Once you've defeated Pixie, the dungeon is complete, but before you leave, talk to Tasha Riley to join the team and be awarded the title Minion of Mayhem. Now just leave the dungeon and hand in the quest to receive your achievements, the shadowy disguise and Mayhem Mind Melder toys. I do like this dungeon, but feel it's a little too difficult for anyone just having fun with pet bottles. Some of the RNG is frustrating at best and unless they nerf a few fights a little I don't think many will feel motivated into doing it very often. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.